Hello and welcome to worship from Aberlour Parish Church this week, the Sunday just before Holy Week. We come taking further our journey through John's Gospel. We remember, actually read the reading normally associated with today in the calendar, Palm Sunday, a couple of weeks ago. And so, slightly out of phase, we join Jesus at the table with the disciples. And we find Jesus giving those disciples a new commandment. We understand that everything for Jesus, everything for the disciples, everything for us as believers hangs under this love. Let's worship God. Let's pray. Lord of all being, we're commanded to love you with all our hearts and souls and minds. And we love you because we see your love in every part of our lives. We sense that your love is woven into all the joys and the pains, that it's there in the glories and in the heartbreak. You are indeed the Lord of all we know. Saviour Christ, we know fine well how we need your help to live our best, to love as we ought. We look to you because you offer us forgiveness and new beginnings each day. We hear your words of forgiveness to the thief on the cross, and your words to all who can hear them. You certainly are our help and protector. Jesus, you call us sister and brother. We know this to be a great thing, to be part of your family. You call us friends. So we look to come closer to you, sharing all our lives in the light of your love.
we pray with the whole of the church when we recall the words we've been taught by Jesus when we say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of John at chapter 13 and verses 30 through 38. Let's listen for the word of God. Judas accepted the bread and went out at once. It was night. After Judas had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man's glory is revealed. Now God's glory is revealed through him. And if God's glory is revealed through him, then God will reveal the glory of the Son of Man in himself, and he will do so at once. My children, I shall not be with you very much longer. You will look for me, but I tell you now what I told the Jewish authorities. You cannot go where I am going. And now I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. If you have love, one for another, then everyone will know that you are my disciples. Where are you going, Lord? Simon Peter asked him. You cannot follow me where I am going, answered Jesus. But later you will follow me. Lord, why can't I follow you now? asked Peter. I'm ready to die for you. Jesus answered, Really, ready to die for me? I'm telling you the truth. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you do not know me. Amen. So last week we had Jesus washing the disciples' feet. This week, Jesus has done this and is now at the table with his disciples. And despite the image we often have of the Last Summer, Supper, things like Leonardo da Vinci's artwork, The Last Supper, spring to mind, John's Gospel doesn't actually have the Last Supper with the breaking of bread and the sharing of wine in the way that the other Gospels do. But that doesn't mean that it's not an important event in John's telling of Jesus's life. In fact, at the table is the setting for the largest block of Jesus's teaching found anywhere in all the Gospels, including the Sermon on the Mount. For us, following through John's Gospel, that poses a slight logistical problem for the time that we're in at the moment because it means that some of the most important things that Jesus says appear in what is, time-wise, a very compressed period. Fully seven chapters of John's whole 21 chapters detail the events of what we call Monday, Thursday and Good Friday, that tiny gap of time. So rather than try and squish all it in, all that text, in the next holy week or so, we'll revisit more of what Jesus has to say at the table side in the weeks after Easter. But here we have the very beginning of what Jesus says to the disciples at the table side. And one of the very first things we notice about it as a reading is that people around Jesus, these disciples whom he has loved and taught and performed miracles in front of, they still just don't get it. 
They don't understand that something significant is about to happen, even though Jesus is telling them almost plainly. After all this time they've been with Jesus, they still don't get what Jesus is about. To take the two examples named in the passage, on one extreme end is Judas, who's about to betray Jesus to the religious authorities and the soldiers. Did you catch how at the start of our reading, when Judas leaves, John's Gospel mentions that it is night? We've spoken in previous weeks about the way John's Gospel uses the imagery of light. Jesus is the one bathed in light and day. This is the Jesus who at the start of the Gospel is the light of the world, the light which shines in the darkness. Well here, Judas is taking the place of something like Jesus' opposite. And so it's no coincidence that there is mention of night when G- Judas goes out, in contrast to Jesus' it's light. And on the other end of the spectrum, I suppose, is Peter, who's swearing his love and loyalty to Jesus, love even to death, but a love and loyalty that Jesus knows and tells Peter we feel with a poignant disappointment, a love that will come up short in only a few hours before Peter three times professes not to know Jesus. In one sense, the attention of this reading then is on the disciples, the the goings on of the people around Jesus, near Jesus, and the ways in which they are, in Judas's case, have let Jesus down, or in Peter's case, will let Jesus down. But in the middle of all this maelstrom of relationships and the comings and goings of the people, Jesus says a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you, he says. The profoundly simple, yet profoundly difficult commandment. The thing that Jesus, knowing what is to come, leaves to the disciples At the very top of what is about to be several chapters worth of Jesus' teaching is this commandment. The funny thing about it, and the way that it comes in John's Gospel and the reading we've just had, is that you could completely skip over it. The verses before it don't anticipate the new commandment. The verses immediately after don't reference it. If you cut out those two verses where Jesus gives the commandment, the unsuspecting reader or the hearer of the story probably wouldn't notice because what you'd be left with would be Jesus saying you cannot go where I'm going and then straight away Peter would ask well where are you going and the story would make sense this command is stuck between that verbal exchange and the way Peter asks after it it's almost like he missed it it is in fact all too easy both in terms of the grammar of the story but more importantly in how we learn and hear and live and grow in faith to miss that commandment, the commandment to love. Of course, we know that if you were to do that cutting out of those two verses, you would miss not just the heart of this reading, but the heart of the whole gospel. The challenge is not just to notice it, but to live it. And to live it with all the seriousness that Jesus gives it. This is the first thing he says at the top of a whole load of teaching. And this is not just guidance or a suggestion. This is Jesus commanding. In all that Jesus is facing, what he wants from the disciples, what he wants to know will be the case for them. And therefore what he's commanding them to do is for them to love one another. Because Jesus knows, and the disciples will come to find, that that love is what they'll rely on. In the hours of Jesus' death, at the time of the resurrection, as they go on in their lives to tell the world of the good news about Jesus, the one who showed God's love, lived God's love, actually was and is God's love, It's that love that Jesus wants to know they will have. It's that love and the determination to be and build communities of God's love 
that will become the early church. It's that love that becomes the church's distinctive calling in the world. And that calling and the call to love is handed on to us in the church today. It's that love which binds us, for better and for worse, to each other and to God. It is gift, it is grace, and thanks be to God for that. As we come to Holy Week, and prepare to follow Jesus in the path to the cross. May we be reminded and renewed in our calling to this commandment. May we be people who, in whatever difficulties we face together, are determined to grow in Christ's love together. Amen. God of each and God of all, we are challenged to love as you have loved us. And so we offer our prayers and our time, our talents and our wealth 
to look out for those who are lost and those who have strayed. Where our love is limited and often lacking, we ask you to give us a share of your inexhaustible love for those we struggle to understand. We pray for projects and organisations which work to provide support to those in need. Help those who offer services to those in need to do so with careful consideration of the dignity of each human person. God of each and God of all, we know the desperate need so many people have of healing in body, mind and soul. And so we pray for your healing for those who are in pain, that they would know your healing through medical help or a word or a touch of your spirit. We cry for peace in our world, between neighbours and between nations. Bless and strengthen the work of all those who offer mediation in troubled places. We despair for the spoiling and the destruction of creation in the sea, in the earth and the skies. Bless and strengthen the cause of all those who work for conservation. Hear these our prayers, God. In Jesus' name we offer them. Amen. Let us go from this time to live in God's love. 
and the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us all, this day and forevermore. Amen.